For the last two decades, orthopedic surgeons have been publishing papers that say that FAI bone shapes, these hip impingement bone shapes, are related to hip pain and that there's a clear relationship between hip pain and FAI. What they don't tell you is that this is based on highly biased research and questionable interpretation of data. I'm Matt Chu from Upright Health, where we help you think right, move right, and feel right. If you're new here, be sure to check out the description box for helpful links for more videos to help you understand the realities of FAI and what you can really do to help your own hips. On this channel, we've looked at a lot of studies that show that there is no link between FAI bone shapes and hip pain or FAI bone shapes and arthritis. But there are still studies that surgeons will point to that claim that FAI and hip pain are related. So in this video, I wanna take a look at one example of one of those studies so you can understand what kinds of data they're looking at and how they're interpreting or misinterpreting that data to support their position. In one 2010 study, researchers looked at the prevalence of FAI bone shapes in people with hip pain. They looked at a young population to see whether FAI and hip pain were related. So all of these people that they looked at had hip pain and they saw that 87% had some kind of abnormal FAI bone shape. So they said, since people who have hip pain have FAI bone shapes in a high number, that means that the FAI bone shapes are related to the pain. But that is not how you can safely and accurately interpret that information, and I'll explain why. This study is representative of a lot of studies that seem to support the link between hip pain and FAI. These studies will look at a group of people who all have hip pain and say, look, these people have FAI bone shapes, therefore these things are related. But that really doesn't work. Imagine, for example, we took a group of 100 people with hip pain and we said, well, all of these people have at least nine fingers. Therefore, having more than nine fingers is linked to hip pain. That wouldn't make sense. Or imagine this scenario. We take a group of 1,000 people who all have hip pain and we notice that all of them have two knees. Does that mean that two knees is related to the hip pain? No. The key here is that we can arbitrarily choose any characteristic whether or not it has any relationship to the experience of hip pain. So for surgeons to look at the bone shapes and say, well, look, all these people have these bone shapes, they must be related to the hip pain, doesn't make sense. It would be like looking at a group of 100 people who are over six feet tall and saying, well, 85% of them like to play basketball. It's probably the basketball that's making them all tall. The correct way to look at this is to see if there are FAI bone shapes in people with no hip pain. If you can find FAI bone shapes in a high number in people with no hip pain, then it's highly likely that the FAI bone shapes have nothing to do with hip pain. And in fact, that's what they found. It sounds really dramatic to say, hey, 87% of people with hip pain have FAI bone shapes. But when you take that in the larger context of how many people have FAI bone shapes and no hip pain, it's not very dramatic at all. For example, in one study in 2015, they found that 54% of an asymptomatic no hip pain population had cam impingement and 76% had pincer impingement. And in a 2017 study done in Brazil on young soccer players with no hip pain, they found that 84.8% of the players had FAI bone shapes, but again, no symptoms. So what's this all mean? Well, it means if you're looking at a group of people, you're going to find FAI bone shapes. 
But those FAA bone shapes don't have a relationship to whether or not those people have pain. You could take a group of 100 people who have hip pain, and you could take a group of 100 people who have no hip pain, and you'd find a lot of signs of FAI in both groups. So it's impossible to say that it's the FAI bone shapes that are causing the problem. In the same way, if you took 100 people who have the flu and 100 people who don't have the flu, and you said, well, this group drinks water and this group drinks water, you'd have no conclusion to make about the water and the groups with flu and not flu because the water is not the determining factor of whether or not this group has the flu or this group has the flu. It's irrelevant. If bone shapes aren't relevant, what is relevant? From our experience training people with hip pain and helping them get out of hip pain, what's relevant is muscle balance and muscle control. It's very easy for the muscles around the hip to atrophy, to get stiff, to get very weak from our modern sedentary lives. We spend a lot of time sitting, we spend a lot of time doing repetitive tasks in the same position all the time. The muscles around the hip joint require much more activity and training than what we do on an average basis. A lot of us are engaged in sports in a repetitive fashion. We're always in the same positions, running the same way, getting into the same ready stance, and that trains the hips to only move in very specific ways. And once you've lost other pieces of the range of motion, you start to experience discomfort and pain. And the only safe way and the only right natural way to address that is to gradually train those muscles to do the right thing. We've seen this approach work for people who use our FAI Fix program online. We've seen this work in person when people come to work with us in our studio in California. We know this approach works, and we also know it can be tough and takes time. The big takeaway here is that it's not a quick fix. It can take time to get severe hip pain to go away, and it can be a tough process of exploration and persistence to get your hip muscles to start working better. One of the key things that we often remind our clients is not to get overly concerned or let fear take over when they feel pain and discomfort in their hips. There are a lot of small muscles around the hip joint that can feel just really sharp and really intense when you start to use them or when you put them in the specific positions. But those are actually just signals to you that you need to either do something different or do something more in a different way so that you can retrain the muscles to feel good. If you need ideas to help you explore your hips, be sure to check out the description box for links to our hips playlist where you'll find all kinds of exercises that you can experiment with on your own safely and carefully. You'll also find a link to the FAI Fix program which will help you troubleshoot your own body so that you can help yourself. If you liked this video, be sure to click the like button and share this video with somebody you know who's got hip pain and who's afraid that they need surgery for hip impingement. Leave us a comment below, let us know what you learned from this video, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. As always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.